Hello everyone, Daja Hao. I'm very happy to be here and to attend with you together 8th International Conference of Chinese Image Medicine in Budapest. I'm also very happy that my professor and teacher Sumi Tang is here and together with all of you that we can present works which are in the field of image medicine. Let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Ana Žikić and I come from Serbia. After graduation from Medical University in 2005, I got a scholarship from Ministry of Education and Sport and I became a student at the University of Traditional Chinese Medicine in Beijing. In those superior advanced studies, I spent five years from 2006 to 2011. I believe that everything is happening for a reason and really the first day I got to a dormitory, which was the part of my university, I get to know about Qigong. Before coming to China, I was sure that I want to learn this technique, but I couldn't imagine that the first day of my stay there, I found Zhongyuan Qigong. It took me first two years to go to the first level of this knowledge and system and to get introduced to the Kundal Institute, which opening was 2008. So my first teacher was Olga Markova Smirnova and I'm internally grateful for her and for her unselfish giving, teaching and sharing from the heart. She inspired me in many, many ways as a healer, as a teacher, as a woman, as a person. And also I'm very happy and lucky that I got a chance to meet and learn from Professor Sumi Tang during my time in Beijing. After finishing my studies in Beijing, I also had the opportunity to attend summer practice in Shaolin and these were also unforgettable days because just before my returning to Serbia, I could uh, have more knowledge and more experience to integrate into my practice. Later on, from 2016 to 2018, I attended the program of Integrated Structural Acupuncture at Harvard Medical School in Boston. And this program was based on Japanese style acupuncture and also this style I integrate into my work. Right now, mostly, I base in Serbia in Belgrade, where I have different kind of activities which are based on traditional Chinese medicine. One part of my work is work with patients in the clinic and I have to say that mostly 70% of my patients are attending one of the seminars of Qigong and some of the seminars which are called traditional Chinese medicine and her practical usage because I want to learn them and to give them as many tools which they can apply in their everyday life. For sure, Zhongyuan Qigong is one of the perfect ways which they can integrate and which can improve the quality of their life. Also, my teacher Olga so far came to Serbia several times where she was teaching and sharing her knowledge from uh, Qigong and from all activities what Kundaval Institute is sharing all over the world. Image medicine is also an important part of my healing sessions and I find it very profound and inspiring in many ways. Uh, it's improving results a lot because mostly I'm using it together with uh, acupuncture and uh, I really think that we are all very blessed because this wisdom has come along our way. Looking backwards, starting with to practice this system in 2008 up to nowadays, I think that my life is very rich and uh, inspiring in many ways because it's present daily. My topic, uh, which I choose to share with you, is how to use image medicine in treating of chronic fatigue syndrome. And uh, first of all, I have to explain what is chronic fatigue syndrome and how it's diagnosed in the terms of Western medicine. In recent years, more and more patients have been diagnosed with having chronic fatigue syndrome, which is also known as post-viral fatigue syndrome. This is a current name for disorder unusually characterized by extreme fatigue and variety of associated physical, constitutional and neurological complaints. 
uh, there are uh, different explanations, but still it's unclear what really can trigger chronic fatigue syndrome, but often it can begin after a bacterial or viral infections, and also it can be induced by chronic stress and hormonal imbalance. In uh, terms of traditional Chinese medicine, we could say that Wei Qi, actually the Qi um, of the body, which is protecting us for different factors, it's weak. Usually, patients are between 25 and 50 years old, although cases in childhood and middle age have been described. It's more common in women than in men, suggesting there may be also be a hormonal factor uh, together with uh, appearance. Uh, so, mostly the people and patients who are coming with chronic fatigue syndrome are women. When we are speaking about physical symptoms which can be included with chronic fatigue syndrome, it's very important to say that fatigue which exists does not originate from exertion and is not relieved by rest. So after rest, actually, patient does not feel better. It could be together with sore throat, headaches, joint pain, persistent slow-grade fever, weak and aging muscles and swollen lymph nodes. Physiological symptoms which are included in chronic fatigue syndrome are depression, agitation, impaired memory or concentration, confusion, a patient has a need for excessive sleep, and also these symptoms can be worsened with slightest exertion. In order to tell something uh, more about diagnosis in the terms of traditional Chinese medicine, we first have to know that in traditional Chinese medicine, we are very often speaking about the balance of yin and yang. And actually, this balance in our body can determine our health. We can also say that um, perfect balance does not exist because women are more yin than men and men are more yang than women, but we still have to find a balance in order to be healthy in terms of our physical, emotional, mental and energetical body. Another thing which we are very often speaking in uh, TCM is the state of qi and blood. Why it is like that? We have one saying that the blood is a mother of qi and the qi is commander of blood and actually these two vital substances are always going together. Their flow is through meridians and they are influencing the proper functioning of some organs. There are also many different factors which can influence and upset the balance of qi and blood. It could be poor diet, lifestyle, emotional stress, overwork or irregular sleep habits. When this disharmony occurs, then the illness also appears. Usually, in Chinese medicine, we are also speaking about patterns. So, pattern is actually the way how we diagnose disease in TCM, and this is the common language how we are communicate between each other. I will share with you some patterns, actually what can occur in terms of traditional Chinese medicine when patient is having chronic fatigue syndrome. Usually, it can be spleen deficiency, liver deficiency, liver chi stagnation, kidney yin deficiency, kidney yang deficiency, and phlegm obstruction and dampness retention. This is something what, which can happen in different patients and our pattern and syndrome differentiation diagnose are very important because this will influence the way how we are treating patients. So, for spleen deficiency, for example, we have fatigue for no clear reason and at the same time, patient has lack of appetite, stomach fullness or bloated stomach. Mental restlessness can be also present. In the case of liver deficiency, we have headaches, joint pain, numbness of the four limbs, blurred vision and, in this case, hollow pulse and light tongue color. Maybe I didn't mention, but tongue diagnosis and pulse diagnosis are very important part of traditional Chinese medicine. And of course, in image medicine, we have diagnosis by pulse also. In liver chi stagnation, mostly symptoms are headache, depression, bitter taste in the mouth, physical and mental fatigue, chest tightness and hypochondriotic distension. Kidney yin deficiency, we have nice sweats. 
and for example kidney yang deficiency, we have day sweats or automatic sweating, and patient is dislike of cold. Back are usually weak. Phlegm obstruction and dampness retention include fatigue, restlessness, sleeplessness, plumpit chi, chest tightness, puffy face and leg, and slippery full pulse. This is very important because it's the first step how we can diagnose patient in terms of traditional Chinese medicine. The method of Chinese medicine I was using mostly are acupuncture and moxibustion. What is acupuncture? This is insertion of needles into different parts of points of the body and moxibustion means the use of burning moxa to stimulate certain parts of points of the body. What is moxa? Moxa usually presented in the form of stick it's made by special herb named Artemisia vulgaris. Moxibustion can be added as a part of therapy and it's very, very useful in the terms of young deficiency, in the cases of young deficiency, especially kidney young deficiency. This was one uh, case, this was one of the patterns I just mentioned to you. Acupuncture and moxibustion treatment can adjust organ functions like Zang and Fu organs. This is the way how we are uh, name organs in terms of TCM. And also what they are doing, they're improving energy levels during the day. They boost Qi and help it to regulate freely. They improve spleen and kidney function. And also they help to expel pathogens such as phlegm and heat and dampness. Once again, I'm repeating, they can be used together and also they can be used separately. From all patients I had, who came with diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome. According to the basic principles of traditional Chinese medicines, usually they belong to patterns of spleen qi deficiency, liver qi stagnation, kidney yin or yang deficiency. And from all patterns, these patterns are mostly present because they are connected with the patient's lifestyle. And as you know, nowadays this means diet habits, emotional balance, uh, somehow people are very hard to regulate their emotions nowadays, they don't know to express them or they hold them inside or somehow they suppress them, and irregular sleep during the aging process. So maybe sleep can be irregular when we are younger, but as we are getting older, body needs balance of yin and yang activities. This means balance of activities during day and nights. Now, if we are speaking about diagnosis in terms of image medicine, in most of the cases, the connection between organs wasn't correct, especially connection between the liver and heart and liver and spleen. Also, I mentioned that the area around the navel towards stomach meridian on both sides is stiff or very tender. Also, it can be cold. The, one of the first steps I'm using to, when I'm diagnosing patients is palpation method and this is how I can see which parts of the body are cold. Liver and very often the spleen area are lazy. Why it is like that? Because coldness is present around the navel and more often around the kidney area and also when we have coldness it means no action, something is stopping. So organs are becoming lazy, they are not proper in their function. Kidney usually has low energy level and this could aggravate blockages in the spinal cord. For us, this means transcendental channel. In the area of groins, there are three yin meridians, spleen, liver and kidney meridians. They had low energy flow. Many patients have cold knees and a very sensitive area of internal popliteal fossa. And this is also the yin area. The treatment process I was using was usually combining of image medicine and acupuncture and after the treatment each patient was got uh, some kind of advices how he or she should behave during the day. This means some diet habits as well the practice of Zhongyang Qigong. Something what I was using together with acupuncture mostly uh, were the parts of image medicine. So, the basic steps I was doing are pet the whole body in order to awaken Qi. Usually I was doing this from Bai Hui, point Du 20, down to the first point on the kidney channel, Yong Chen. Then, if it was needed, we pet the legs of patients from the bottom up. Take the way cold if it's needed, but in most of the cases it was needed, I should say, because people have a lot of cold inside of them. Four points activation 
was very successful method. Usually immediately they could feel that their energy is moving. And because this is done around the navel, this can be painful. Uh, but um, needles, if we place the needles as the same position after the treatment, next time when patient is coming, this area is less painful. Point stomach 25, Tian Shu, was used bilaterally and this was important to connect the upper and lower warmers, as well the pre and postnatal qi. Qi Hai, Ren 6, was used to transform qi, while Ren 12, Zhong Wan, was used to direct qi and takes away the tension and pain where it was needed. Still, I'm speaking about the treatment process I was using. Awakening the physical organs was very important. Mostly, I was I done it with the liver, spleen and kidneys. Uh, liver condition is usually in TCM connected with the emotional state of patients. And when we awakening it with yin yang ball, this gives very, very good results. On the end, changing the image of internal organs using the correct images and using the mantra Bien is usually part of the treatment. It was a very good part of the treatment. And then create the good connections between organs and again use the mantra Bien to change the current ones when it's needed. Bigger, smaller method in order to awake Qi of the kidneys was very good. And one of the mantra I used the most is Ming for cleansing and brightening the whole body and its energy. I should say that patient felt very good while this is done almost on the end of the treatment. Acupuncture was the part of the treatment and the generally used points were Susan Lee, Bai Hui and Nei Guan. Auricular acupuncture was also used. In the case, we are using adrenal, subcortis and endocrine areas. Why these points are the most commonly used points? First of all, Susan Lee is extremely important to strengthen the earth element, spleen and stomach and assist the chi in eliminating fatigue. Susan Lee, or I should say stomach meridian, are belonging to the earth and this is the point of the earth on the meridian of the earth, so it's very important. Bai Hui Du 20 is the meeting point of all young meridians. It can raise young chi, open orifices of the body, calm spirit and extinguish wind. Point Neguan, pericardium 6, through the yin wei meridians, connect the stomach, heart and chest and it counts the heart and settles the shen. This is the point which is opening point of extra meridians, so her function is very important. These points are strongly recommend for this kind of patients and then we should see to which pattern each patient is belonging so we can use some more points. The frequently used acupoints, beside uh, these points I already mentioned, are uh, stomach uh, 25, bilaterally, REN 6 and REN 12. And these points also were stimulated by image medicine method. If it was spleen deficiency, we could add Sun Yin Jiao, spleen 6 and Yin Lin Chuan, spleen 9. If it was liver chi stagnation, we were adding liver 2 or liver 3 for liver deficiency together with Sun Yin Jiao, spleen 6. In kidney yin deficiency, we were using kidney 3, Tai Si. And for kidney yang deficiency, we were already mentioning that moxibustion was very useful as a part of the treatment and point do for Ming Men. Image medicine method was used here. Usually patients were, would ask how many sessions do we need. Image medicine treatments, when they are combined with acupuncture, according to my experience, they are giving faster, very good results because the treatment itself is stronger. So, four to seven sessions are needed in order to attain and maintain good results. Usually, they are one to five hours long. Sessions are performed once to twice per week. Each patient is individual case, but they can usually feel better and stronger already after the third session. So according to my experience, sometimes there is aggravation which is happening, but we are saying that aggravation is a positive sign of better signs and uh, better results what we want to get. And uh, after third to fourth session, there is the first so-called jump of energy. Usually the whole set of sessions can take two to three months in order for good results to stay. Sometimes periodic visits are necessary until the symptoms are gone. 
according again to my experience, splinchy deficiency, liver chi stagnation and deficiency, they have good results from these treatments. Kidney yin deficiency can take longer time in order to get good results because, as we said, some changes are happening due to lifestyle of patients. So, patients need to change their lifestyle. This is actually necessary. As I mentioned before, after, in most of the cases, after third or fourth session, we can have some change already. It can be aggravation of, or patients are feeling better, but what happens in the most of cases, usually after five sessions, patients are all using the same sentence. They feel more alive, they feel lighter, and they are kind of awakening again inside of their body. The results are better in acute cases, and uh, these cases are the ones which have a history three to four months or uh, less. If treatment is supported by herbal medicine, qigong exercises and proper changes of diet and lifestyle, the results are even better. On the pictures you can see something what I'm recommending to all patients. This is kind of continuing and prolonging the results what we are getting during the treating of patients. Uh, these are the seeds, magnetic seeds, we are planting, uh, placing on ear lobe. This is ear acupuncture. Or maybe I recommend for them different areas on scalp, scalp acupressure. And the third one is using of moxibustion. Moxibustion I'm using by myself on the clinic, but then I teach them how they can continue uh, to use it mostly on stomach 36, Susan Lee point, and how often and how long. This is, uh, di this is uh, prescribed to each patient individually. I wanted to give one case, like a case study, and uh, th this is the patient uh, who had very good results of this kind of therapy. She is pharmacologist, 45 years old, she has one child, her name is Maya S. Her main complaints were chronic fatigue for 15 years, joint pain, which uh, has become worse lately, depression and need for sleep. She suffers from insomnia. Because of her profession, because she has to stand a lot, this aggravates the pain in her joint and legs. She had a lot of examinations in terms of Western medicine, but so far they uh, has not found the cause of disease, cause of disease. In terms of TCM, this was the case of spleen chi deficiency and kidney yang deficiency. Her tongue was enlarged, pale, with a thin white coating. Her pulse was weak and deep. In terms of image medicine, very low chi movement through the right side of the body, especially legs. Liver and spleen were lazy. There was almost no connection between the liver and heart. Her kidney area was cold and there were also blockages in the spinal cord, transcendental channel was blocked. Her neck area and shoulders were very stiff and bladder meridians were blocked along her body, especially the back and calves. How many sessions we had? We had eight sessions during one month. Every time I start treatment with patting, activating four points, removing the hold from her body. This was necessary in her case. Then I clapped her legs and joints. I tried to find bad information and clean it, change it to connection with the organs, and after that created the good connections between organs, using usually the mantra Bien. I focus especially on Dantian and then the kidneys, and uh, this was important because for her this is the source of vital energy, bringing the heat in those positions. And the end of the treatment I used mantra Ming. For acupuncture treatment, the points were Bai Hui, Susan Lee, San Yin Jiao, Tai Si, four points around the navel almost every time. There is extra point called An Mian, back to the ear lobe on the skull, and this point she was massaging uh, every time before going to sleep. Her acupuncture was used every time too. Uh, she knew the basic Qigong movements and she was the part of the group I have, I have in this way I could see a lot of improvement because we were uh, seeing each other uh, more often than only in the clinic. And I recommend uh, therapeutic acupressure which became the part of her daily routine. So beside the point she used before sleeping, she was using stomach 36, spleen uh, 6, area of uh, back shoe points, kidney 23 and the change of diet was recommended. After the four sessions, she was, uh, there were some improvements. She was sleeping better, 
not longer, but the quality of sleep was better. Her joints were less painful. This changed during the treatment procedure, but um, it was continuing changing to a better state. Her level of vital chi was better and she felt really more alive. Every time she was coming, uh, I could see there is a change going on. After eight sessions, many of her previous symptoms were better. What about the lifestyle? Eventually, actually, she had to change food, exercises, qigong movements, applying moxa and so on. And once in next two to three weeks, treatment was advised. I would like to say some words as a summary of this work. After graduating traditional Chinese medicine and integrating the principles of image medicine in my work, I could say that uh, acupuncture together with image medicine really is, are giving uh, very good and profound results. Also, results are seen faster and um, effects are more profound. This also gives to patients a deeper understanding of their life and purpose and it's like discovering the value of life again, especially in patients suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome. Every time after uh, treatment, I could see they're more alive. It's like it's written on their face, but they're becoming more radiant, more alive. Uh, their will for life is higher. I tried my best to share with them how Zhongyang Qigong is uh, good and how they should change something from their lifestyle and diet and if they really do so, it remains a part of their uh, daily routine. Today's life um, is changing and it's full of challenges. Uh, we need to remain conscious and really to dedicate ourselves to live our lives in certain weight. In order to keep inner peace and create a happy life out of it, it's necessary to our modern and commercialized society to imply certain routines, physical activities and nutrition. This is important because each person has to nurture first herself or himself in order to have better quality of life. Image medicine I see as a great method which can be integrated in today's lifestyle. It gives us deeper insights about ourselves, about life, who we are, what we are doing here, how we can really be more satisfied with each day of our life. Implying this, implying these methods to yourself and others means getting to know the beauty of life day by day. And image medicine, it's really as a family medicine. And each happy family is like a seed of more happiness in all over the world society. I'm really grateful to Professor Sumi Tang and Kundavil Institute and let us all use the image to create better, healthier, more peaceful and joyful world. This is what we need today. Thank you for your attention. See you soon.